Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time, I've got a full tank review for you on the Tier 10 Chinese heavy tank, the 113. The 113 has never really truly fitted in in World of Tanks. It's always been alone, a tank that no one really wants to platoon with. The vehicle, no matter how hard it tried, could never really find its place or any friends. But all of that has completely changed. In patch 913 of World of Tanks, the 113 was buffed massively. Its speed was enhanced across all terrains due to some ground resistance buffs. And the vehicle was made massively more flexible with a degree of buff to its gun depression. And can kick all kinds of ass with 10% better rate of fire, leaving its enemies as smoldering wrecks on the battlefield. All of these aspects have made the Tier 10 Chinese heavy tank more competitive than ever. I'm going to be letting you know everything there is to know about this tank, following it up with some Ace Tanker gameplay. And if you have no interest in buying the 113, then I'll let you know how you can take advantage of their weaknesses and neutralize them on the battlefield. There's a lot of pressure on the 113, and why is that? Because it's the follow-up to the absolutely awesome WZ-111-14. This is one of my favorite Tier 9 heavy tanks, with an absolutely brutal 130mm gun that's capable of ripping apart its opponents far faster than, for example, the E-75. And so when I got to the 113 before patch 913, I was brutally disappointed with this tank. Just nothing really felt like it was that much of an upgrade. But with the buffs, this vehicle does feel fun finally worth it, let's see how it stacks up against a lot of the other tier 10 heavy tanks that would previously probably have outshined this tier 10 Chinese heavy. So here I'm going to compare the 113 to the T110E5, the IS-7 and the IS-4. Right from the start we see that the 113 has 10% better DPM than the T110E5, and basically 20% better DPM than the IS-7 and the IS-4. And that's not a small difference. Previously in patch 9.12 and before, the 113 had the same DPM as the T125. Now it just leaves it behind having 10% better. And that's because this vehicle gets six rounds a minute rate of fire, the same as the T125, but its alpha damage on the 122 millimeter caliber main armament that it uses is 440 rather than 400 on the standard 120 millimeter on the tier 10 American heavy tank. And while this 122 millimeter is comparable to that of the IS-4, it fires an extra round a minute, allowing the 113 to now outtrade its rival tier 10 heavy tanks and also shoot its way out of a situation where it's outnumbered so much better, something that's very frustrating about tier 10 heavies. The penetration on this main gun, however, is 249, which is the lowest in this comparison, 9 millimeters less than the T125 and the IS-4, and very comparable to that of the IS-7. So how does the weapon handling compare on these tanks? Well, the aim time is slightly better than the IS-4, and the IS-7, but much worse than the T-125, with 2.8 second aim time rather than 2 seconds on the T-125. Also, the accuracy is slightly worse than the T-125 at 0.37, but at least that's better than the Soviet Tier 10 heavies. One thing that's interesting about this vehicle is it gets exactly the same dispersion while moving on tank traverse and also on turret traverse as the T-125, which is slightly better than that of the IS-7 and much better than the IS-4. And that was another aspect of the tank that was buffed in patch 913, which was a really big change for this vehicle. The 113 used to have four degrees of gun depression, but now it's five degrees which is still not quite as good as the 6 degrees that the IS-7 and the IS-4 get, and not nearly as good as the 8 degrees that the T-110E5 gets, but 5 degrees just makes this tank so much more flexible than it was previously. The 113 is also very fast for a heavy tank, it goes at 50 kilometers an hour, which totally outshines the T-110E5 at 37 kilometers an hour and the IS-4 at 43 kilometers an hour, but doesn't quite get up to that remarkable top speed that the IS-7 has. However, there's no use in having a great top speed unless you've got the engine power to use it, and the 113 has a better horsepower to ton ratio than any of these tanks in this comparison. And this advantage is compounded by the fact that it gets better ground resistances on both hard terrain and medium terrain. 
and much better resistances than the IS-7 on soft terrain, making this just a much more mobile tank that feels more like a medium than a heavy. Furthermore, the tank's track traverse is 36 degrees a second, much better than the E5 or the IS-7, and way better than the IS-4. But watch out for the turret traverse on this tank, as it positively isn't like a medium tank at only 26 degrees. So, so far we found that the 113 has a remarkable gun compared to the, the standard heavy tanks that we're looking here, and it's also much more mobile than them. So you'd expect that the armor is going to be quite a lot worse, and well, yes, it, it kind of is. The frontal armor on the tank is 120, the side is 90, and the rear is 70, which can't even hope to compete with the Soviet true tier 10 heavy tanks with 150 at the front on the IS-7 and 150 at the side, with the IS-4 having 140 and 160 at the side. And the recently buffed HD T110E5 has got a whopping 254 armor at the front, albeit weak points on the lower left and the lower right of the hull. But the 113 120mm of armor is very well angled. Look at this slope here. If the 113 angles like this, it actually gets nearly 300mm of effective armor on the front and still has about 200 to 250mm with a lot of spaced armor along the top. But there's one aspect of the 113 that totally sucks, and that is the lower plate. The lower plate on this tank is 100 millimeters thick, and even if he angles like this, it's still only 200, less than 200, 180 millimeters of effective armor, and not enough angling on the lower plate, as we can see here to go above that 70 degrees armor angle that you need for a ricochet. So what that means is that if you are shooting at a 113, as we can see here with the live models, the lower plate is just an opportunity right up until this angle here. He's going to have to angle more than this to be able to ricochet using his lower plate. One thing that's remarkably good on the 113 is the side armor, however, which is 90 millimeters thick, way better than the T110E5. If you angled this much in a T110E5, it's quite likely that your opponents are going to be able to butter the side of your tank. In the 113, however, you can angle the front of your tank very effectively while still maintaining a very good angle on your side armor, which would be a clear ricochet. And so this is pretty much perfect angling in the 113 from every angle, unless you see that the opponent is aiming at your lower plate and then you probably want to try and overangle it, or better still, hide it, as we can see that it doesn't actually ricochet until this. An absolutely horrible weak point on this vehicle. Turret-wise, this tank is pretty strong. It's got 240 millimeters of frontal armor, and the turret is actually quite low profile. It's a lot lower profile than the 121, the tier 10 Chinese medium tank. And really, unless your opponents hit your cupolas or fire premium rounds and hit your cheek armor here or here, it's not going to be going in. Health-wise, the 113 also doesn't do too bad. It actually gets more health than a T110E5 and 150 more than the IS-7, which you'd think was quite surprising considering how light and mobile the vehicle is. And it also maintains the stereotype of 400 meters view range on all of the tier 10 heavy tanks which i like to combine with coated optics to really be able to spot your opponents at very long range one good thing about this tank as well is that the engine has got quite a low chance to be set on fire but watch out because i feel like i get set on fire quite a lot from the front of the tank with the fuel tanks so i don't recommend taking away a fire extinguisher otherwise you're going to lose your 2300 hit points of health very quickly indeed and so I think that's quite enough theory crafting. Let's get stuck into some gameplay. And so here we go. We are playing in Kharkov and we're in a very nice matchup here, actually. We're on one of only two tier 10 tanks on either side on a city map. A great opportunity for any tier 10 heavy and especially for the buffed 113. Check out the speed of this tank. We're up to 40 kilometers an hour along the flat here. Are we going to get above 40 as we race our way into position? Ah, slowing down a little bit as we have to turn, but we're off-road here, so the ground resistances are not quite so good on medium terrain as they would be on the hard. But still, a very mobile heavy tank. If I was in a vehicle such as the IS-7 or IS-4, I would probably still be trundling my way into position. And so that allows me to get here and hopefully be able to set up an ambush. Now, I love this starting opportunity. Look at what the enemies will have to try and deal with if they want to be able to get through our armor. Yeah, yeah, good luck, guys. From this kind of a position, I would be very, very, very surprised if they're able to hit our armor. This is going to be a ricochet here. We've got a nice bit of spaced armor that I failed to mention in the garage, actually. I think 20 millimeters of spaced armor along here that they'll have to try and hit. The only real chance they have is a cupola here or a cupola here, which at long range is going to be quite tricky, or alternatively hitting the cheeks of the tank with a very high penetrating round. So, let's move on. 
I didn't really get any action in that location, which is a bit of a disappointment when you think about it. I was very surprised. Usually my opponents will, will love to go across the front and take hits. Talking about taking hits, that T10 on the enemy team is quite lucky to be left alive on seven hit points. I'm also quite mindful of this bat chat down towards my north. He's already picked up a kill, and that is a scary tank to have shooting into your side. He's also a very valuable tank on the enemy team. Oh gosh, the Spearpanzer managed to went through my side armor. But by combining our turret traverse and our track traverse, which is very good on this tank, by the way, the track traverse, we can quickly swing our tank around and stop that dastardly T10 from challenging us. So I really want to get rid of those medium tanks to my flank. It, while you've got good frontal armor in this tank, and your side armor is is okay, you, you don't want to have a tier 10 French autoloader shooting in the side, so I want to deal with him first. I put in a rather bad shot at the beginning. Not managing to hit the bat chap. But we're just threatening him here. And really, there's no pressure on me. I'm locking down a tier 10 tank. Oh, wow, that one went far to the left. Not a very good shot there. And the bat chap seizes his opportunity to be able to race across. Maybe we can hit him with the next one. Come on. Yeah, there we go. 467 damage. Fair enough, it's not quite as nice as the 490 on the tier 9 WZ-111-14, and not as nice as, for example, on the IS-7, but having that 440 alpha damage just feels so much nicer than the T-125. And the fact that you don't have to sacrifice any rate of fire to be able to get that alpha damage advantage really does shine through for the 113 and gives it like a bit of a sweet spot compared to the E-5. Now we put an AP round right through the lower plate of the Jagdpanzer E-100, and now we reload heat ammunition, because that Jagdpanzer E100 is a super valuable tank on the enemy team, and he's managed to get himself hull down. And 240 millimeters of penetration, or 249, doesn't really do very well against the superstructure of the Jagdpanzer E100. Unfortunately, putting a heat round into the E75 isn't going to do my wallet any good. But we actually bounced a shot there from the Jagdpanzer E100, hitting that part of our tank, his 170 millimeter gun, I believe, with roughly 290 millimeters of penetration, unable to go through the upper plate of our tank when angled there. The armor's just really lovely on this vehicle on the front plate. We put another round into the Jagdpanzer E100 using our heat, and sorry dude, it's over for him. So we had to fire three heat rounds there, probably cost us maybe 12, maybe 13,000 credits, but we've taken out a vehicle that would have simply held us there for the rest of the game. Now that we've removed him, we can move on and we can use our standard ammunition, hopefully against the, the softer tanks on the enemy team, to be able to see if we can win this round. So there's a T-54E1, he bounces off us. We put a shot into his turret, we angle our armor, and we bounce a T-34 as well. Hopefully you're getting an idea of what the hull armor is like on this tank. You've got to love that rate of fire buff. Previously, I would have never been able to kill that T-54E1. However, now firing six rounds a minute, I'm in a good position to do so. We bounce the T-34, who seemed like he fired down onto our upper plate. We put a good round into him. And just to talk about DPM disparity in heavy tanks, I fire 50% faster than this T-34. So I fire six rounds a minute, and he fires four rounds a minute. And also, I've got 10% higher alpha damage. When you see a T-34 in a tier 10 heavy tank like this, it truly is just a, a, a super tasty snack. You've got enough time to put two shots into him, do a little circle, do a little dance, and you've even got 10% more alpha damage than his gun. We are ricocheting a lot of damage this game. We've already bounced 2,780 damage as we put around it there into the tier 7 American light tank, the M41 Walker Bulldog, and he scuttles away not wanting to have to fight this gargantuan, this monster tier 10 Chinese heavy tank that is tearing apart the enemy team on Kharkov. But the game isn't going that well even. Even though we've picked up a top gun already and 4,500 damage, the enemy have still got a darn good chance of winning this if this bat chat can have the impact that he needs to have as one of the only two tier 10 tanks. Well, doesn't look like he did. Maybe we missed him a couple of times earlier, but we finally finish him off. The gun handling and accuracy on this tank is okay. You're kind of seeing a lot of shots at close range. Um, in the next replay, you're going to see how this tank fares uh, at mid to long ranges. And also towards the end of this replay, you're going to see how this tank fares with its accuracy uh, at long ranges as well. 
from this kind of a position, this 5100 really just can't do anything to me, especially if, he, if he's AFK. I seem to see that he's AFK and try and press my advantage. The E100 on my team finishes him off, and I'm like, curses. I would have quite liked a Radley Walters medal in the, uh, in the 113 here, but it just wasn't to be. Maybe we can finish off the IS-3. Here we go. Can he pick up the eighth kill to secure the Radley Walters? It's IS-3 versus IS-3 with the Centurion 7-1 rapidly descending in. Let's aim the shot, aim the shot, aim the shot, aim the shot, aim the shot. Oh. Oh, well. Guess it wasn't to be this game. You saw the uh, 2.9 seconds, or is it 2.8 seconds aim time, I believe, there. Combined with uh, the 0 0.37 accuracy, really not doing us any favors to try and pick up that hero medal at mid to long range. This was a great game for the 113, showcasing all of its strengths. It's highly mobile. It's now got monstrous DPM, and it has enough armor to bounce even the best of guns. That was a 170 millimeter round bouncing off there. We also bounced some 120 millimeter high penetration rounds from the T-34, still ending the game with most of our hit points intact. Of course, this was a very nice matchup for the tank and also a rather nice map. Let's see how the 113 does when it's kind of a little out of its environment on a map such as Lakeville. So now we're in a much more tricky matchup. There are four tier 10 tanks on the enemy team and there's some very good players in scary tanks really scary tanks, the new TVP T-51. And this map, it can be a little bit tricky for a, a heavy tank. Quite often you can trundle into the town and I really don't want to have to duke it out against T-125s. We'll have to expose my lower plate. So I decided this game, why not play aggressively and play as if I'm a medium tank. We take a snapshot at the t Tiger II there on the move. We hit his tank but fail to do any damage. We aim at the next Tiger II and I'm making an aggressive play. Check out the mobility here, up to 46 kilometers an hour into position. We hit the uh, the Type 4 Heavy on the enemy team for 447 damage, and using the coated optics combined with some good crew skills, we've basically uh, reached the, the spotting distance cap, at least in this game. But remember, there's no such thing as view range cap as view range counteracts camo rating. Now we're gonna see what the armor on this tank does. Boing, 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 hey? Taken two hits that have ricocheted, one that's done no damage. We bounce a heat round there from the T-125, and we return fire, putting a good round into him. And right now, basically, I, I spotted, I guess, uh, seven tanks on the enemy team in that position, hopefully allowing my friends, who are situated back here, to be able to get easy shots in. And this is just a, a lovely position for the 113. I can use these rocks to hide most of my side armor, and hopefully be able to pick up shot after shot into our opponents. And holding this position really is valuable. If you try and do this, for example, in a, a maybe a tier 8 medium in this kind of a matchup, all it takes is maybe the T62A to bundle his way round, or even the TVP T50 slash 51 to come and have a go at me and then push me out. But good luck trying to dig out a 113 from this position. Sounds like the artillery just missed a shot at us. Oh gosh. That probably means that the artillery has located towards the northeast. And that was a heat round, another heat round blindly fired by the T-125. And we've managed to lock down this Type 4 Heavy from even managing to get anywhere into the town. It's certainly me who's spotting that tank. I really do like using coated optics on this vehicle. Maybe it's something that I should be trying to transfer to a lot of my heavy tanks. Maybe the ones that are more mobile? I don't know. I think dropping vents is obviously a big thing to do. And some of the tanks that have even worse aim time than this really could use a, a gun lane drive. So the artillery finally finds us. Luckily, we put a good hit there into the T-10. Gosh, we lost 834 health to that M5053. Sorry, the 5355 on the enemy team. That is pretty brutal. Remember that when you've only got 120 millimeters of frontal armor, when the artillery does manage to hit you, it doesn't do you much good. And then you're basically just going to start to lose your 2,300 hit points fairly quickly indeed. So I'm now going to be a lot more careful about getting hit by the artillery. I'm going to try and use this rock to avoid where I think he is, which is up here. We take another shot to the tracks. No damage. The only thing that's actually managed to damage us, even though we've been hit 14 times this game, has been the artillery. We've blocked 3,000 damage already. And I'm, I'll, we'll take a look at how much spotting I've done from this position in the post-game stats. So right now, my idea was 
Well, it looks like the valley's doing pretty good. Maybe if I just hold this position and provide some view range for my team, that means the valley might push through. And when the valley pushes through and reaches here, then I'll be able to also make my assault as well using the rocks that we can see along here. This is a good position to stop and shoot from as well. And then once you've actually got past this location, you have to get around the corner. So I thought that the town was doing, I mean, I thought that the valley was going to be doing very well. They've only got a centurion against them now, and they've got two tier nine tanks and a tier eight tank to deal with that centurion. The rounds are still coming in at me. The enemy's just trying to take punts at me. I think that was probably the T-54 who had a go there, but he went so far forwards that the IS-7 manages to punish him. And so this, really, we're in a bit of a stalemate here. Not too much going on. I, and there's really no opportunity for me to be aggressive. I've pushed into an aggressive location, and I'm certainly holding a, a very important location for my team. And gosh, the artillery on my team manages to take down the Centurion 1. But a TVP T50 slash 51 just totally changed the engagement down the valley side. He pops up and he gets a double kill in a single magazine, killing a Panther 88 and then a 5120 basically one and a half seconds later. That tier 10 Czechoslovakian medium tank truly is a monster right now. Also, by using this location, I'm stopping my enemies from going towards the north of the abbey. I take a blind fire of myself by myself as well. And that sneaky Tiger 2 actually managed to get a shot into our back. I'm quite surprised it managed to take my track off as well. It must have gone through my hull armor and then gone into my track. Bad result there for me. Now you get an idea of the gun handling of this tank uh, at long ranges. That's a very low roll though. Only 352 damage done out of 440. I want a refund. But it doesn't do the Tiger 2 much good as our second round flies through. As I mentioned on Kharkov, just such a lovely rate of fire on this tank now, six rounds a minute. And so now I decide it's time to have a poke at the SU-12254. The Tiger II takes out the T-25AT behind me. My team is deciding to push down the middle. And it's only a matter of time before I decide that it's time to go after this Tiger II. I'm just hoping that I can hear where the artillery fires from. If I push out, uh, I've got to do so quickly. I've got to go from one rock to another, be able to sneak my way um, towards the enemy base without getting hit in the side. And here we go. Finally, I do what I'm thinking now in retrospect. Going after a Tiger II. Easy shot into the side of the turret. Only 380 damage, though. I'd quite like to roll high here. We angle our armor. He tries to shoot our side armor, but 90 millimeters of side armor and our tracks absorb the shot. I take a look to the side to see if I'm about to get shot. And this six rounds rate of fire, just lovely there. 1,206 damage done to the Tiger II, and we didn't even have to roll high with our final shot. For example, if we were using a T-125, we would have been only a 50-50 to be able to kill him at that time. So I get hit by artillery again. Oh, that sucks, right? 926 damage done this time from the artillery. And it also knocked out my commander and my turret traverse. So that round that he hit me basically cost me 30,000 credits because I had to use two premium consumables as well. And I don't even get to kill him. Mercy roll, leaving him on 3% of his hit points. Grr. But at least the Borsig on my team finishes him off. And so from here on... The enemy are just under far too much pressure. I decide to advance and go after the T-28 prototype. You see that I try to avoid going into the cap circle, something that I recommend that you do if you want to sneak up on your opponents. And this T-28 doesn't see me until too late. I take a shot on the move into his tracks, get up behind him, and oh, I'm just sorry, T-28. He doesn't have a fully traversable turret, so he can't even turn his gun the whole way around. We track him again. And we shut him down. Pretty ugly way to take out that tier 8 American turreted tank destroyer. So now we're going to push forwards and just basically cap. I don't really want to go down after the SU-12244. Uh, sorry, 54. On my health, I'd far rather just cap out and play it safe and not have to trundle down. And eventually, our Fosh manages to shut him down. So a different kind of gameplay here to the previous one that you saw on Kharkov. We didn't really play like a true heavy, although we had the armor of a true heavy 
<laughs> bouncing 3,840 damage. It was only really the artillery that managed to, to take away our hit points significantly, apart from the Tiger II obviously shot us in the rear of our armor. But this replay, I really wanted to show that the 113 can be played like an aggressive heavy. It could be played a lot more like a medium tank. And so, frankly, this tank is now actually a bit of a novelty. And with the just huge buffs to this vehicle in patch 913, the tank has never been more competitive. And there's never been a better time to pick up the tier 10 Chinese heavy tank. So our first game on Kharkov yielded us a high caliber medal and a top gun for the six kills, 5,102 damage, seven kills actually that we got. We blocked 2,400 damage, giving us a potential damage received of 3,013. We had a huge amount of hit points left that we could have carried the game with if we had needed. My accuracy wasn't so good in this game. We hit 16 out of the 21 that we fired, but all of those penetrated as you would expect in close quarters combat with 249 millimeters of penetration. Even though we fired a few heat rounds that game we still made 30,000 credits profit and firing heat at that Jagdpanzer 100 certainly was completely the right thing to do and even without a premium account we would have still made 6,500 credits profit in a tier 10 tank while still firing those three premium rounds who would have thought so on Lakeville we had another great result we got a cool headed metal a high caliber and a steel wall for the 5,000 damage that we did in the three kills 1,030 base experience points we also did a good amount of assistance damage 1,400 combined detecting and detracking from that position as you would expect we got hit 20 times from very high caliber shells in that game only three of them penetrated those high explosive rounds and the one from the tiger 2 from behind giving us a mount blocked of nearly 4k showing what you can do with 120 millimeters of armor if it's very well angled and once again we managed to make ourselves 36,000 credits profit great round for the tier 10 chinese heavy tank and so that is the 113 in a nutshell previously it was in my opinion one of the weakest tier 10 heavy tanks but when you increase its rate of fire by 10 percent you decrease the amount of dispersion that it gets while it's on the move and when it's turning its turret when you increase its gun depression by 1%, and when you also decrease the ground resistances, enhancing the mobility of this vehicle, it goes from being one of the worst to probably one of the most competitive tier 10 heavy tanks, at least in the right kind of situation. And the fact that this tank has such good mobility, but still so much power in this 122 millimeter will certainly appeal to a certain kind of player. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And if this video has sparked your interest in Chinese heavy tanks, then simply click through up here or use that more info icon in the top right hand corner of your screen to be able to see some gameplay in the tier nine Chinese heavy tank, the WZ-11-14. And let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the 113 now that it has been buffed. What did you think of it before the patch? And what did you think of it after the patch? Especially if it's one of your favorite tanks and you drive it a lot. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.